Today we are back in the Venetian Islands here in Miami once again and today we are walking on San Marino Island and yet another spot I've never been, never shot a video here, first time just like you. So we'll check it out, see what's around here and you know insurance is such a big deal right now guys and so many people are actually getting dropped they're losing coverage okay so you have homeowners insurance today people are getting non-renewal letters and saying yeah by the way we're not going to renew your insurance the area you're living in has too many claims it's getting too risky etc etc well what happens when this happens to you well obviously you, you probably have to find new coverage most people are not going to go without insurance i know i made a video the other day talking about how some people will risk it right they'll go it without insurance and decide to self-insure and depending on your level of luck your level of discipline your level of income that might actually be a feasible option for some people combined with the fact that you have to have a paid off home okay but obviously the majority of people probably 90 percent of people cannot do this although i did read that somewhere in the neighborhood of 37 percent of homeowners don't have any debt on their home so Maybe it's higher than, than I think, but I don't know if that's a true stat or not. Now, the states that are getting hit the hardest right now with these non-renewals is obviously Florida, but California is on the list as well as Louisiana. But it's not just exclusive to these areas, guys. Like There are other places that people are getting non-renewal notices for as well that are outside of these states. I had to laugh when I read this story and they talked about the averages that people pay for homeowners insurance because they say the national average for homeowners insurance based on a $250,000 dwelling went up 20% this year to $1,428 annually. And I'm sure people in Florida would kill to get that $428 annual expense right now for homeowners insurance, considering here the annual average is up to $6,000 a year right now, which is insane. But of course the status quo says you should never go without homeowners insurance because it's too risky and obviously if you have a mortgage you're required to have it. So you get this non-renewal notice, what happens then? What do you do next? Well, one thing that the insurance experts say to do is they say that you should find ways to make your home more insurable. <laughs> well, obviously, most of the time you can't move the house. So location is probably the number one reason that people lose coverage. So this is kind of stupid to begin with. But let's see what they have to say. They say that you should take a look at things like implementing a fire alarm system or a security system. And you can also make sure that the outside of your home is uh, more resilient by clearing the vegetation and reducing the wildfire hazard if you live in a wildfire region. Probably talking mostly about California here. You can install things like smart leak detection sensors for you know your plumbing system. You can have things like smart thermostats and uh, those type of things can help you stay insured. Well, <laughs> from what I can tell guys, most people are losing insurance right now not because they don't have the right thermostat or because they have too many trees in the yard. It's because of the location of the property. Now, I have done a report on this in the past where an insurance company actually can drop you because you have too many trees in your yard or they can require you to cut a bunch of them down if you wanna to continue to receive coverage from them. I have heard of that, that is legit. But let's be realistic here. The number one reason people are getting dropped is because the state that they live in. Florida, California, Louisiana. I've heard stories out of Texas recently too. If you live in one of these areas, it's really hard to find affordable coverage right now. And yeah, you can do things like if you're here in Florida, you can update your roof, you can install hurricane shutters, and sometimes it will make a difference of whether or not your policy gets renewed. And one thing that they tell you to do is if you get a non-renewal notice, the first thing you should do is contact your insurance agent to see if you can try to work something out. If you guys can do something like, hey, you know, if I do X, Y, and Z, can I continue to receive coverage from you rather than getting dropped? Because the other problem with losing coverage is if you actually lose coverage and it lapses for a certain amount of time, then 
the next company is likely to charge you far more just because you were uninsured for 30 or 60 days, whatever it might be, which is ridiculous, but it is what it is. But it doesn't hurt to ask your insurance agent like, hey, if I do these upgrades on the home, can I continue to keep insurance and more importantly, insurance at a reasonable price? And like I said in my self-insurance video, this is criminal guys. Like the fact that these companies can collect premiums from people for decades and then come out and just drop you you know because you don't have the right roof or you don't have hurricane shutters or whatever i wish they would do something about that that should be illegal because you know they just collect your money and bail when the timing is no longer convenient for them you know which is right now when you have replaced higher replacement costs now and you know actually paying claims costs a lot more money than it used to they're just looking for ways to get out of it and drop people right now. How'd you guys like to live in a nice expensive neighborhood like this and all you hear all day long is dump trucks and weed whackers, leaf blowers and all of this. You move to a place like this, think it's gonna be nice and quiet? Uh-uh. I thought it was noisy where I live. Well, let's also be realistic here, guys. Putting in a security system in your house is probably not gonna make it so that way your insurance doesn't get dropped, okay? That's probably highly unlikely of a scenario. Now here's a funny story because they were talking about a guy out of Los Angeles that got a non-renewal notice and he actually was able to find new insurance through State Farm and Farmers Insurance was the one that dropped him. And ironically, shortly after this guy picked up insurance from State Farm, State Farm came out and said they're not gonna write policies in California at all anymore. It's listings like this one that really start to crack me up. This is a house they're asking $45,000 per month for rent, but when you look at the history, they rented this house in 2019 for only $14,000 a month, and then the beginning of this year, they listed it for 50K a month, lowered it to 45K, no one has rented it, it's been half a year already, and here's the kicker, guys. $125,000 a year property tax bill. So even if they could get 45 k a month, they would need three months worth of rent here just to pay the property taxes. So obviously this guy got lucky just in the nick of time to get a policy with State Farm just before they stopped writing new policies in the state. But that doesn't guarantee anything, guys. Like he could get dropped next year when the renewal notice comes up and they just won't renew him, you know, just like what's happening to everybody else that we're talking about here. Now, one thing you have to watch out for when you're in this non-renewal situation is people get desperate and they start looking at lesser known insurance companies and that's a fast track to getting scammed, unfortunately, guys. You have to watch out for these fake insurance companies that will write you a seemingly legitimate policy and in the end, it ends up being fake and they just take your money and run. So this is a very common insurance scam. And as you can see, this is something that's a problem now because more and more people are getting non-renewal notices. So easily scam artists can take advantage of people right now by pulling this sort of stunt. So you gotta really watch out. And if you're not sure if an insurance company is legitimate or not, you're supposed to ask for their NAIC number and provide this number to the state that you're looking for insurance in for verification. There's also a lookup tool you can check out their NAIC number with to see how many complaints they have and things like that. And I'll leave a link for that down in the description below so you guys can take a look in case you need to use this tool. It's a free tool, anybody can use it. And um, it's important to check this out so you don't get scammed, guys. You can also do things like look up the insurance company's rating with AM Best. You also wanna look at how long the insurance company's been in business for all things that are signs of whether or not this is a legitimate company. And then of course, if you can't find any insurance company willing to take you, which actually happens to some people, then unfortunately your last resort is to check with your state and see what kind of uh, state-run insurance programs they have. Because unfortunately, this is the end of the road for a lot of people. This has been happening to literally over a million people here in the state of Florida. And in California, this is starting to ramp up. And over there, they have the FAIR insurance program, which obviously is not FAIR at all, because from what I've heard from the people who live there, that the amounts that they charge for this insurance is astronomical, and the coverage is basically nothing. So it is insurance, but it's not very good insurance from what I understand. I love these little walkways they have here in the Venetian Islands that you can actually come out and get a view of the water here. And it's just like this cool little walkway that apparently they have for the flood pumps here. So thanks to all the flooding we get here in Miami, they have a little slice of the bay that we get to come out and enjoy.
Now here's something interesting about inflation is that owning a home or owning real estate in general is supposed to be one of the best safeguards and best hedges against inflation. And when you're just purely talking about price appreciation over the decades, that is largely true. And I have no argument against that whatsoever. But here's the funny thing. They're saying how the CPI right now is not correct because the CPI uses rents to basically determine the level of inflation for the homeowner's cost of living, right? The most recent inflation report came out to be a 3.21% increase in May for the homeowner's cost of living. And they estimate that the annual increase for homeowners is about 8% per year in homeowner costs. One argument that's trying to be made right now with the CPI data and inflation data is that homeowners actually have a much lower rate of inflation than renters because the BLS, which is the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they view mortgage and property tax payments as investments in an asset, meaning your property, rather than spending, okay? Which in some ways is true because you can recover some of that money when you sell the property or if you sell the property, right? Versus renters, when they're renting and they get a lease renewal notice, right away they're hit with higher inflation because their rent just went up a lot of times, okay? So the argument that's being made here is homeowners should have a lower rate of inflation than renters when you look at it through this lens. Well, I disagree with that as a current homeowner, guys, and the reason is very simple, and it's because there are a ton of costs related to owning a home. Like, for example, we just had to get new laundry machines. Now, we didn't have to get them because they were still technically working, but there was a problem where the washing machine would leak intermittently, and it was just unexpected. You wouldn't know when it would happen. And the other problem is the seal around the washing machine was getting so old and outdated that it was starting to stain our clothes. So, you know, half the clothes would come out black sometimes from this old rubber seal. And then if you're gonna replace the washer, you might as well just replace the dryer, you know, as a set. So we did. So that was like two grand, okay, to get new washer and dryer machines unexpectedly, right? As a homeowner, you cover that cost. You don't have a landlord to call and complain to. But that's small fries when you're talking about expenses of being a homeowner, guys, because you know everybody thinks that once you buy a house that your payment is fixed for life and that could not be further from the truth. Yes, when you get a fixed mortgage, your principal and interest payment is fixed for the life of the loan. So let's say that that's $2,000 a month, that's never gonna change. However, that does not cover the full cost of homeownership because your principal and interest payments are only a portion of your actual house payment because you also have your property taxes. You also have your homeowner's insurance, which are becoming very large expenses for people right now. So much so to the point where some people may even be forced to sell because it's getting so expensive. Now, if you have an escrowed mortgage like I do, all that's included in what you pay in your monthly mortgage, right? Plus, if you live in a condo like I do, or you live in a gated community with an HOA, you also have your HOA fee on top of all of that. And guess what, guys? The only part of your mortgage payment that's promised not to go up is your principal and interest. The rest of it, all subject to go up every single year. HOA goes up. Property taxes goes up. Homeowner's insurance goes up, okay? So these are expenses that are completely outside of your control when you're a homeowner that you cannot mitigate. So for these guys to come out and say that inflation is not as bad for homeowners as it is for renters, I think is a flat out lie because it actually could be worse if you ask me. Like all the years that I was renting, I never had the amount of increases like I've had since I've become a homeowner, okay? Like it has been more expensive to be a homeowner for sure, like without a doubt. And the increases that come with it are much larger if you ask me and far more unexpected when you're renting you can negotiate ahead of time with your landlord like hey oh maybe uh we can keep the rent the same this year you can agree to a certain amount of increase before the lease even renews so that way you know like two months in advance this is how much my rent's going to go up by and that's it but when you're a homeowner you do not have that peace of mind guys i'm sorry to tell you but it's just not true okay now, of course, if you live in a less expensive area, you know, not living in Miami like me, then these increases can be far more subtle. And there's no denying that. And in that case, homeownership could be more stable and possibly provide a lower rate of inflation 
but I'm also willing to bet that if you live in one of those more stable markets, then you're not seeing huge increases in your rents, okay? Your rent's not getting doubled. So the bottom line is I don't think it's really fair to say that homeowners have a lower rate of inflation than renters because over time, it all adds up, guys. I would say it's probably pretty even for both parties. Rent goes up, so does the cost of owning at home. It all goes up. It's not like any of this ever goes down over time. $45,000 a month, Psh, that's nothing. I'll one-up you at $55,000 a month. I was asking $45,000 a month, but now I'm gonna ask 55 just because the neighbor listed it for 45, so I need to get more. Let's have a contest. Let's see who can leave the house on the market for longer and have it sit empty. <laughs> I'll even one-up you on the property taxes because mine are $141,000 a year, more than your $125,000. If you don't think this insurance problem is a big deal right now, think again, because there are developers now that develop multifamily apartments here in Florida, and it's becoming so hard for them to develop now that they're looking at pulling out of projects altogether. And one of the main reasons for this is because insurance. The cost of insurance is so prohibitive right now that it may even, you know, put the kibosh on developing new properties right now. Developers in Texas and Florida are facing tremendous insurance costs for building new properties. Apparently, when you're building new construction, you also have to carry insurance on the units that you're building. And check this out. One developer here, based out of West Palm Beach, Florida, he says that his insurance cost at the beginning of this year went from $600 to $800 per unit. But now, over the past few months, it went from $800 per unit to now anywhere between $1,200 to $3,500 per unit. It's raining out here a little bit right now, but it's not so bad. And this insurance has such a tremendous effect that it can actually uh, cause huge delays affect the site selection of the property or even just kill deals altogether and just never build anything. They're pretty much saying that it's getting harder and harder, if not impossible, to find properties that actually work out, mathematically speaking, in terms of does building here make any sense right now? Check this out, guys. This would be way too much to put all the info in the video, but we literally have three houses in a row here that are for sale right next to each other. <laughs> Looks like everybody on these uh, waterfront islands is looking to cash out. It's probably getting way too expensive to hold on to these properties. This place looks completely abandoned right now. And the one right next door looks totally to be the opposite. Totally brand new. All three of them for sale. We're on West San Marino Drive if you want to check these listings out for yourself. Since I already put a few of them in, it would just be way too many. So the developer here is saying that, well, these insurance companies have looked at the tremendous replacement costs of things now, and they're saying, well, our policies are not really reflecting the true replacement costs, so therefore, you know, the cost for your insurance has to go up. But don't forget, guys, insurance companies are for-profit businesses, and their CEOs get big bonuses every year, and these people make a lot of money. So for them to just come out and say that this is all due to the rising cost of everything is a bunch of BS. You know it, and I know it. That's part of it. But the other reason also is the rampant amount of insurance fraud that goes on is tremendous, guys. That is, in fact, the number one reason why so many insurance companies have gone out of business and left Florida altogether because of the crazy amount of insurance fraud that has taken place here over the decades. So to me, this looks like just yet another headwind for the housing market as the insurance market starts to deteriorate all over the place and it just starts to get more expensive i think this is going to be another catalyst for people to sell properties guys especially in high priced areas like this like look i just showed you three houses next to each other for sale that's not very common you don't see that very often anywhere i've been doing these walks for a while now and i don't think i've ever seen three houses in a row that were for sale so People just can't afford the upkeep. You know, the property taxes on these places are insane. The insurance is insane. And the more insane the cost is, the more likely people are gonna be looking to get out of it right now. But my question is, who is going to take it? Who's gonna step in there and absorb that expense right now? That's what I wanna know. Anyways, the rain's starting to pick up. Let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next one to drop, check out this one right over here and I'll see you in the next one.